new state was brand new to me. He said, let me go to a school that's bigger than my last school. Let's see what happens with the other pandemic. He arrived, and he helped us with the OIT team to do a PeopleSoft paperless system that we talked about for five years. But we got the resources, and our team with Julie and Melissa and others built a paperless system, like building a plane and putting the wings on in the air, putting the tires on in the air. And we did all this to take care of that process. $9 million of housing and tuition to the school. Never missed a beat. And then because of all that and the VA score, for the first time ever, we're number seventh in the nation of every school you can think of, and we're in the top 10 forever. In the middle of that too, the VA came to us, called us and said, we want to have VA vital mental health care and health services on your campus. And like all good things, we all said yes. And then eight months later, after legal counsel, we got that all done. And when we came back to the pandemic, I'd like to introduce uh, James Hill. <laughs> Already talked about that. And now the VA has changed everything on us. Our team that used to just certify, we now do all the payments. Great, Melissa, raise your hand. That's Melissa and cashiering office working with us, third party building. But we also now handle all the debts for the P card. Melissa, raise your hand. <laughs> and in the middle of this, we now have to certify every file twice. So if there's 1,500 debts, and if you're an alumni, we used to certify you once and you got paid. Now we certify you so you get your housing and your books. And then we don't do tuition until after drop ad. And that means we now have. 3,000 searches to do with three people. Provost Stevie, Dr. Fain, Steve, all immediately were able to get us a budget for an SCO. We we're in the middle of the hiring to have a permanent position for that. And the Elder Gateway Foundation, Heather helped me put out the call that we still need additional help. And they funded us with $100,000 to fund two letter of appointments that literally saved our life during this period. But that gave us five SCOs to take care of business. To give you an idea, when we went remote, also Provost Stevie approved us to have a pilot program for eight weeks. The SEOs work from home, everyone else is in the office for customer service. 874 certs in 19 days in September. That's unheard of. We used to do 10 a day. So that makes a huge impact. So I'm grateful for that. Eleanor Gay has been a partner of ours when I met Brian in 2013. I didn't know Brian. Brian invited me to McCormick and Spick, a nice lunch. Thankfully, I was dressed up. And I went there and met a whole team of people from the Eleanor Casey Foundation. I had no idea who they were. And at that lunch, he said, Ross, if I give you $10,000 today, what would you do with it? So I made something up, and he wrote me a check. <laughs> and then I went to the foundation and said, I went to lunch, and someone just handed me some money. What do I do with this? And they're like, foundation. I love the foundation. They said, that's not how that works, Ross. You have to be the foundation. <laughs> so I learned that lesson. And, uh, but they have been a partner of ours nonstop. They funded career fairs and this breakfast and everything we've ever asked. And the, our growth of 600% is because of the programming. And Eleanor Gaby and Brian and your team, I appreciate you guys. <laughs> now we did the right way. Heather Rappaport, Foundation Liaison with Dr. Fade and the Foundation, walked over to our office one day with a couple that was casually dressed like tourists in Vegas. And they just said, hey, Ross, we saw an article about you guys, and we would love to help you out. So I thought it was going to be like a $10,000 check. So I said, hey, you can buy some shirts, you can do this. And they said, no, 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 we want to give you $150,000. $50,000 for programming, but $100,000 for five years, 20 k each year, so you can help fund student worker stipends to have a robust team to help you with customer service and mentoring. In addition, the Nevada Department of Veterans Services, if you ever have a military license plate to get out of a speeding ticket, that money goes into a pot of money that Fred has under his mattress and he gives you a grant. And they have funded career fairs, our paid license, and our walk across the bat. Now what does this mean? I'm sorry to show you this slide, this is terrible. But in red, there's three people that certify, Melissa, Julie, and Yuko. The two blue members are funded by Elder Nicadia, and one of those would be a full-time position that's in the works. 
Down below is the Dee Valero family fund stipend. So if you work for us minimum wage and you're a leader, we give you then a stipend to augment your pay, double your pay, to work the same 25 hours for us. And then Steve has helped me over the last couple months during the pandemic uh, do a change of responsibility for our paperless system and our new website that will be a veteran virtual resource center. So all of that has been in the works during the pandemic. And then the VFW, Lonnie Spikes is here. <laughs> so Lonnie is a Vietnam veteran. We went from uh, 1963 to 1993. We were some of the same units later. I was after him. And I meet him at the USO all the time. He's in my VFW post. And they have funded us with an emergency fund for the Evolvement Center for veterans in need that need groceries or book stipend while they're waiting on their pay. They've done all of that. And every one of our veterans who's eligible, like Mr. Andrew Ho, they have paid his lifetime membership to be a VFW member forever. They've done that nine times and five times for the presidents. And then VFW nationally has given $28,000 through Sport Clips. Every time you get a haircut, sport clips in November, the money goes to a national scholarship, and some family in this room probably got some of that money. So I appreciate all those guys. And at that meeting, I am the youngest guy in the room. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, we took care of meds and <laughs> And we also made new coins, and they helped fund our Rebel Vet graduation funds. And now it's time to recognize Andrew Ho. Andrew, could you please stand up here real quick? We have had a huge history of eight exceptional Rebel Vet presidents. Two of them are in the room as alumni. A third did his own thing before we got here, but he's a Rebel Vet president. You'll hear from him. But Andrew Ho is a great kid. His family is a Vietnamese American family that after the fall of Saigon, they came to the United States and he joined the military and went to Africa and Kuwait and served over there. And then he uh, stepped up to be our president December before the pandemic. <laughs> and like all good presidents, he was like freaked out because he's replacing a president that was veteran of the year for the nation. And like, what am I going to do? And then we had the pandemic, then what am I really going to do? Well, I will tell you, he knocked it out of the park. I don't tell the UNLV this, but we did some hikes on weekends during the pandemic where 50 people would just individually show up to the same space. <laughs> <laughs> in a mask, social distance, not isolated, no suicides, walk up the hill, complain about everything, talk about the VA, talk about remote learning, and then go back in the car. He organized all those things with no social media, which was the hardest task. Uh, in addition, he worked at Share Village, where we packed uh, groceries for the food insecure. Uh, we did a team with Bowling with Blue for incarcerated children and Metro Police and North Las Vegas Police and Henderson Police with police officers bowl with kids of incarcerated families, hope for prisoners with justice impacted students. All these things during the pandemic and then developed a leadership success series with national speakers online on Zoom throughout the whole thing. So we nominated him, and to be honest with you, I didn't think we'd win because they're not gonna hand it to UNLV again two out of three years, but they did. <laughs> On a Saturday, Dwayne was at his house, we're all watching, and uh, when they called out his name, I thought he won the Academy Award. <laughs> I screamed so loud that the maintenance lady came up and asked if I was being assaulted. <laughs> and it was amazing. But he was robbed of an opportunity to be recognized. They mailed his plaque. He put on his new epic shit hat. Um, but now we're going to take a picture of you and your photo. Yeah.
seven years as a combat cook. Uh, <laughs> honestly, the pandemic was very exciting and interesting. It was a good learning experience. I'm happy that I, or I'm actually happy that the team that I had found me, because I couldn't have done it alone. All these events were a team effort, and um, I was actually honestly scared, and the pandemic really took down my orange and very eccentric personality, but we, we did it. As you can see, we, we held our monthly meetings online. Um, Regent um, Ms. Perkins was, was there, she joined us, we still advocated, we made care packages for the frontline healthcare professionals, we worked with the alumni club with their Operation Jingle, Jingle Bell, um, and we still went out and did community service. So those are the events that we put together. A lot more, but obviously we can't fit all in one slide. <laughs> Oh. And uh, these are all the awesome things that we've been doing, and we're going to continue doing some awesome things, and I hope you guys keep in touch with us. And that's pretty much it for us. <laughs> Here for Michael Deck that stood up the SBA for the nation, and uh, we're blessed with that. But we didn't do anything when he was there, so after he left, we actually got our stuff together. And uh, we're sort of like the Bill Belichick and the Patriots of SBA. <laughs> and uh, everyone loves us and asks for advice, but they also like those damn rebel beds. <laughs> so uh, I'm proud of you, Andrew, and I appreciate all you've done, and we're getting ready to transition. And the team is going to Orlando for the first live NatCon where he'll be recognized in public, and uh, we'll pass the torch to the next two better than you. And at the end of the day, none of it matters if people don't graduate. And uh, we have had a huge rate of success. It's an interesting number, because none of the vets fit into a cohort. When they track data from the school, almost all of our vets have done classes around the globe, and then they get their transfer credit, and you might arrive here and graduate in a year two years, three years, four years. And so tracking our numbers from when they arrived in August and then how many of those people graduate by the mark, we have a huge rate of return. But then they continue to be alumni and move forward and go on to do great things. So I'm very proud of the entire team and all the rebel vets in the room. And I, was, I forgot to uh, highlight someone who's in the room that I'm exceptionally proud of. If I can have Andrea Martinez stand up, and she's going to hate me for this. <laughs> so, uh, Captain Martinez was prior active duty, and right before 9-11, she joined Army ROTC to be an officer and came to our program and graduated in 2003, just in time to go to Iraq with the 11th ACR at Fort Irwin. She then came back, got out of the Army, did civil service at Fort Irwin for 14 years, married with a wonderful family of twins, uh, and then she came to us and said, hey, I want to get to Vegas where my family is, and I'd love to get a federal job. And through our career fair, she got hired by the federal marshals, and she is giving back with internships for rebel vets, and she hangs out with us all the time. And we did like a 5K cancer walk the other day that really sucked. I don't know, I don't know how we used to do those army hikes, but uh, I'm so proud of you, Andrea. Thank you. Now I'd like to introduce uh, Aaron Manfredi, the president of the Veteran Alumni Club. How's everyone doing? Thank you for coming. It's been a couple of years. We're excited to have you. Uh, the Rebel Vets and UNLV Veterans Alumni kind of run parallel with each other, and I have officially recruited Andrew for, for us next year for all the amazing work, and I already have a bunch of stuff that you do, Andrew, so we went for him. Uh, the Veterans Alumni Club, you know, we have several board members that have been there since uh, the inauguration of it, John Hunt, um, Jeff Dietrich, our founding president, Bruno Moy was right behind, and I'm leading the way. Um, these uh, were veterans that have graduated from UNLV um, at all different points and times. When I graduated the first time in 2005, we didn't have a military services office, we didn't have counselors, we didn't have a lounge, we didn't have anywhere to go. We were just kind of lost in the shuffle. So from seeing what it's 
become from 2005 to now is light years ahead and Ross, we're, we're forever grateful and all the administration for giving us something that we've never had before. We need to keep growing. Um, next slide, please. We are uh, this, we were created in 19 and 2008. Again, we have uh, some of our founding members. They are still on the board and they are here with us today. Our mission statement is to engage in OB better alumni through professional development, networking, and community service. Our core values, integrity, professionalism, respect, and service. Again, this is a fairly new club and it's continuing, continuing to grow. And we're excited about that. Next slide, please. This is our newest program and really probably one of the most important things we're doing. Uh, Trevor, to me, if you can raise your hand. Both of you were uh, spearheaded this um, new program and this is going to benefit everyone. So this is, uh, for those in this room that want to be mentors, we all know what it's like to go to school and not have anybody to talk to or help navigate around campus. And so, uh, even for those wanting to, once they graduate, go into the workforce, right? Introduce skills. Um, who do they talk to about working? We know the transition part from military to the civilian world can be a little tricky. And so, we're looking for mentors who'd like to help those rebel vets that are getting ready to graduate. And I see a room here full of people that would make um, great mentors. And if you are interested, before you leave, we will uh, get your email and contact information to make sure you get the direct link. It is a minor commitment for great future gains. So if anybody's in this room is interested, uh, we would love to have you and pay it forward. Yep, if I had a experienced me to tell me all the things I didn't know back then, uh, I could have I could have gotten to where I wanted to ultimately be a lot faster. The mentor program here at the UNLV is basically like a peer-to-peer -peer veteran mentoring program. So the idea is that we're going to pair veterans with veterans in the community that have been in the professional world for a while and, and have a, a good idea of what it takes to succeed in life after college. Someone that can help them along their, their professional path. We want people to extend their arm out because we want to help them. So we really want people to take advantage of all the resources. It's not just mentoring. To be able to see that you can in fact accomplish that dream, that goal that's in your head, that is what our mentorship program will do is allow that veteran student to be able to see themselves in that position, be connected to people already in that position, and know that if they make the choice to do so, they too can achieve that position. Having those people around to help and guide you along the way, because there, there's gonna be some hiccups, is what helped me go from being an employee, you know, to being an owner. It's very important to have a mentor because they help you grow professionally and personally. And not only that, they basically grow your network as well. We've always been told what to do in the military. That's why it's very important to kind of have that guidance to kind of help the student veterans integrate with the college population. In the military, if you show up 15 minutes early with a fresh haircut to everything you need to do, that's pretty much the career path of success. And there's so many uh, other variables that go into play in the, the civilian and commercial professional world. You've gotten very used to military lifestyle and military rules, and the civilian world is much different. We will help you along that path. And to me, that's a joy to watch somebody accomplish their dreams and fulfill the mission that they have placed in their life is, is a joy to me.
You know, December 11th, over here at the Veterans Memorial, right behind us, our weathered flag, we're gonna do a flag changing ceremony with Rancho JROTC. And those are some of our events coming up and those will be um, on our website and making sure everyone gets those so you can join us. Now I'd like to have our original founding president of the alumni, Jeff Dietrich and Bruno Moya come forward. So we have a lot of hardware here, so we'll make this quick and get some photos. Real quick, let me tell you about Jeff Dietrich. Jeff Dietrich rolled into town wearing some camouflage pants. They go to school. He just got back from Afghanistan not too long ago. His wife was an Army vet. And then I, I asked him if he needed a job, and I asked him if he wanted to be the rebel vet president. And uh, we didn't have anyone to elect it because we had no, no organization. <laughs> so uh, he was an army of one, and he stood up the, the program, and then Bruno joined us from CSM. We stole him from CSM. And these two gentlemen and I went to our first National Student Veteran of America conference, and everyone was famous but us. <laughs> no one knew us. We didn't know anything, but I knew we had a vision that we would be that one day. And uh, everywhere I went, these two gentlemen were with me, and one guy asked me one time, Ross, do you go everywhere with your bodyguards? <laughs> and I said, that all depends if we have a problem or not. So uh, I could not be proud of these two, because after that, when we stood up the paid program before Dwayne was hired, they were the paid leads as student workers, and they run the program great. Uh, Bruno is a social worker by trade. Uh, then they were the first alumni club president, vice president, and then Bruno was the second president. They have been every bit of the foundation of what we are famous for, and without them, it would not happen. So without further ado, we have a lot of hard work in hand. So we also have a Rebel Vet salute for Jefferson Dietrich, Rebel Vet President, Bay D. Lee, Veteran Alumni President, honors Rebel Vet salute for epic support of our veterans and military families. The knowledge that I died well in so clean a cause as is ours 
So when you remember how proud I have always been of, of your superb pluck, keep Elizabeth's, Elizabeth's future in my mind and in mind, and don't permit my death to bow your head. My personal belongings will be all sent to you. Your good taste will tell you which to send to Mary. May God bless you and keep you dear heart and, and be kind to little Elizabeth and those others I love so well. The next day, uh, Sergeant David Kerr uh, was killed um, in the Battle of uh, St. Meal. And um, yeah, I just wanted to read that. I didn't expect my, me to, to tear up a little bit there, but uh, so I run uh, along with Isaac Salvador, Merchant Bets and Players. We are a program that uh, was founded in 2016 um, from uh, Nate Boyer, who is a former Green Beret, and uh, Jake Laser, who uh, is a former professional athlete and current Fox News commentator. What these two gentlemen discovered was that uh, professional athletes, they transition out of the team, they lose purpose sometimes, some of them have to transition out early uh, because of injuries, and then obviously uh, military members, we, we kind of lose the team as well. We lose our camaraderie, we, we lose a sense of purpose, we have a mission, and all of a sudden we're home and we have to figure out which cereal to buy for a two-year-old, you know? So uh, sometimes it can be a little bit difficult. And what we do in this program, it's a mental health and wellness program uh, where we team up combat veterans and professional athletes and we work out together for an hour and then after that we have a one hour huddle discussion. What that means is that uh, we'll work out doing some type of martial arts and just pretty much let it all out and then go into this octagon at Extreme Couture and Imagine. Uh, where most of, uh, a lot of the elite UFC fighters train at every single day. They let us borrow that gym for two hours every Friday. We go into the Octagon where many of the current and former UFC champions uh, train. And we talk about a lot of our uh, struggles, anything that we, that we need to get out, you know. Uh, and uh, sometimes it's a, a lot of our victories, what we're doing in life, how, how can we support. So that happens every Friday at 5 o'clock. So if you're a combat veteran or professional athlete, if you want to come down tonight and uh, become a good workout in, uh, it's, it's there for you. Uh, that's just a few things that we do. We stay busy. Uh, I'm happy to announce that we are finalizing some, uh, some, some, um, it, or some uh, uh, programming with the UNLV uh, School of Social Work. We're going to have uh, social workers down at, at, at an MMA gym. Uh, we're going to have we're going to be a practicum site, so that's going to be exciting for the school of social work because they've never had any social workers at an at an MMA gym, and it's going to be exciting for me because I I get some students to help me out because we got a lot of work. Uh, so and the other thing that we also do is we uh, we have pop up sessions. Uh, we just began doing pop up sessions here at UNLV. Our first one was just a couple of days ago, and uh, we're excited to continue those every semester. And uh, pretty much, you know, if we, we, we come to you, I know that it's pretty hard to, to get out of the house sometimes. You have family, you have all these things going, going on, but if you're a program, if you're an organization, uh, you have a lot of combat veterans or professional athletes, uh, we'll, we'll come to you and we'll get a good workout in. We'll make you guys and, and gals sweat. Uh, it's not boot camp, but, you know, uh, we don't make it easy either. And then after that, we'll, we'll chat it out. So that's all I got. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much for for uh, coming. Out. So now, for your office, you need to have that double vet salute for working vets and players. And come out here. These two of these people work out. <laughs>
So I'm going to talk with Ross, and we'll get this worked out. <laughs> but I am privileged to be here. I want to give you a little bit about my background, you know, I'm serving in the military and deploying to Iraq and Afghanistan. I ran the student veterans group, Rebel Vets now, which is helmed by many other fine leaders. You saw Andrew here earlier today. And from there, I went on to run the national organization Student Veterans of America. At the time I ran it, it was a backpack and a laptop. Classic entrepreneurial startup. Had less than $100,000 in the bank account and only 20 chapters across the nation at colleges and universities. And then, in a short span of a couple of years, it went from 20 chapters, including one here at UNLV, which still exists and is flourishing, to over 1,000 chapters in all 50 states and three countries, and now is a multi-million dollar nonprofit headquartered in Washington, D.C. <laughs> now, oftentimes, as Andrew mentioned, they like to credit one individual, the face of the organization, which at the time was me. But of course, I didn't do it alone. I had a lot of mentors along the way. And many of those mentors reside right here at the University of Nevada, Las Vegas. And so it is my distinct pleasure to, to be here with all of you, to see Dr. Fain, to see Ross, who at the time was running with the retired two-star General Scott Smith, the Institute of Security Studies, if I recall correctly, Ross. And he was mentoring me as well. I was a little rough around the edges at that time, uh, not as diplomatic as I am today, but um, what I recognized is how patient both the civilians and military veterans on this campus were. And that's the remarkable thing about a university campus, the patience they exercise as we grow as individuals. And so they helped me to become a highly successful leader in my life. And I want to share with you all a few things. First, when I was running as the CEO of Student Veterans of America, I traveled to 46 states and over 100 colleges and universities. I can tell you from my experience, having personally visited other institutions and seeing their veterans programs, the University of Nevada, Las Vegas is the best. our responsibility to continue to do more and to maintain our position as the greatest student veterans of America chapter and leader among institutions of higher learning nationwide. I will tell you that I thought a lot about my remarks today when Ross and the Rebel Vets alumni group asked me, you know, one of the things I thought, what could I touch on? There's a lot of division in our nation right now. And I want to see by show of hands if you've heard about the military-civilian divide. You guys ever heard that notion, that, that narrative out there, military-civilian divide? I see head nods, some hands. Less than 1% of our nation has served in Iraq and Afghanistan. If you add up all the other veterans, it's less than 10% of the entire population. I'm going to tell you that that's a myth. There is no military-civilian divide. It is a narrative that we perpetuate in our minds. Did you see the video that was just played here before? Welcome home ceremonies. How many people were cheering in the audience as a soldier, or marine, or airman, or sailor returned home and hugged their loved ones? Were those all veterans in the audience cheering now? No, they're civilians. If you would have asked me to give these remarks after we came back from Vietnam, Vietnam, I'd say there's a military civilian divide. I can tell you in the past 60 years that this is most likely the greatest accomplishment of bridging a military civilian divide that has ever existed. I've personally seen it. Now I'll tell you what changed my mindset. When I got out of the military and transitioned to UNLV, I brought with me the belief that there was a divide. That I was on this side of an invisible line, and civilians were on that side. And when I retained that belief, it made it harder for me to transition. Some people figured this out in one year, 
Some people it takes five. Some people it takes an entire lifetime. And it's a struggle. But if you continue to maintain that mindset that there is this divide that exists, then it very well will exist. And it will hurt you in trying to be successful in your professional life, and I would argue in your personal life as well. But if you instead work with individuals, cross that bridge, because I would argue that the bridge already exists. It's been built. You don't have to look any further than right here at UNLV. There is a bridge between those two communities, the military community, which includes the veterans population, and the civilian society at large. It's been built over the course of the history of this nation. The question is whether we're going to cross that bridge. Some say we should meet in the middle. It's incumbent upon us to walk across that bridge. And I will tell you that UNLV is a shining example that there is no chasm so wide or gulf so deep between the military community, community and civilian society that isn't already bridged and individuals crossing it. Let me see by a show of hands if you're a student veteran. Student veterans in this, who's a student veteran still enrolled? Keep your hands up. Veteran alumni, have you graduated? Keep your hands up if you're a student veteran as well. Student veterans, veteran alumni. If you're in the community and you're a military veteran or service member, hands up. If you're in the community, you served, and you're a veteran. How many of you have a family member or friend that served in the military? Hands up. And how many of you are a civilian who's part of the administration that is engaged with veterans? Hands up. So look around. What divide? There isn't a divide. And for those of you that are students that are transitioning, you remember that. Because it took me a little while, shorter than most, to figure that out. And so what I do is I have conversations with individuals that are civilians and fellow veterans. And I've become highly successful starting as a private to becoming now a CEO by listening to other people and communicating with them and finding common ground, not division. So that's what I would encourage you. And for the veterans in the room, because there's probably most of the population in this room are military veterans or service members. If you're part of the newest generation of military veterans that transitioned out, I want to encourage you, no matter how old or stale it feels, to join one of those old VFW or American Legion posts or any other ones, to do it. Because I can tell you when I was in Washington, D.C., there were a number of groups that helped me and supported Student Veterans of America to get the post-9-11 GI Bill passed to now what is today the forever GI Bill. And it was them. They took us under their wing. They housed us in the American Legion and VFW headquarters buildings, which are right across the street from the White House and the House and Senate buildings. They brought us in. They supported us, but no one else would. So think of that. Think about that as you depart here. Even if you don't attend the meetings at first, just consider joining and supporting one of the pillars of American society, our veteran service organizations. I believe it is our responsibility to do that. So I've done that. I'm actually a life member now at 12101, the VFW Post. And if there are any other leaders in here that represent other groups, I'd be happy to join. Come and ask me. The final thing I'll leave you on is a contribution from myself and my lovely wife, Janine, who I met here at UNLV. And that is, uh, I, we will contribute, we always contribute every year to the University of Nevada, Las Vegas, and to the Military Veterans Program. We'll match up to $2,500 for a nice even $5,000. So for $2,500, if anybody, any contribution you make, I will match up to that $2,500 to contribute to support the student veterans groups and the veterans programs here at UNLV. And I look forward to constantly, continually supporting the veterans programs here at the university. With that, I thank you all for your time, and I turn it back over to you, Mr. Rosberg.
This is a masterpiece that was not built by myself. It was built by my amazing girlfriend, Christy Whitehour, who spent the last 48 hours sanding it down, and I did not help because it would not look like that. <laughs> but we wanted to give Ross uh, something different than what he already has. He has quite a bit of collection over the years, and so we wanted to make it uh, personable, and on the bottom it says, you know, be debts, because this is a gift from all the UNLV veterans, the alumni, the staff, and to be frank, we would not all be here in this environment if it weren't for Ross, and, that, and that's a fact. So we're sort of grateful, Ross. Thank you for working hard for us, and uh, we've never been enough.